Hey guys, this is Catherine Toon, and I had some stuff. Boy, it's really been on my heart. Good morning, happy, it's a Sunday, uh, if you're seeing this live. And um, I had some stuff, boy, it's really been on my heart. I have been listening to so many in the body of Christ, whoops, I got a hair, thank you, hi Jason, um, that are, are burnt out. They're just flat burnt out or they're just tired. And a lot of it is in the context of church, hi Randolyn, um, of ministry, uh, you know, and, and it's hard because a lot of times people, when that happens, they feel really guilty, like they did something wrong. Uh, hi, Jennifer. Um, you know, and, and, and the issue is it's um, probably you've done some things wrong, but they're not like a sin wrong. It's a how am I managing myself and what am I expecting? Hi there. Yay. All the way from Georgia. Love Georgia. Gorgeous. Hi, Holly. Um, and you know, and, and it, because it's in that kind of religious arena, a lot of times people feel really, really guilty. Hi, Brad. Hi, Mercy. Yay, girl. Um, hi, Elizabeth. Um, they feel really guilty. Why? Because they feel like, wow, I'm serving the Lord. You know, I'm just supposed to be joyful all the time. Hi, Salim. Um, I'm supposed to be, um, uh, you know, just full of energy. Hi, Joanne. I, I, Joanne is coming out with a book. Just a heads up. It's a kid's book. It's coming out really soon. I can't wait uh, to, to read it. So just FYI, congratulations, Joanne. Um, she is incredible. She's such a gifted person. So um, I'm a going to get that for me because I'm a kind of a big kid uh, but um, and I, I'm sure my uh, my kids will probably enjoy it as well I just know her and she's amazing so just a little plug there Joanne Currents um, and if you want to type your book name Joanne you can go ahead and do that hi Mercy I love you so happy to see you she's giving me a kiss hi Leon so let's talk about this burnout in ministry and you know ministry is not just like what I'm doing in the church or in my ministry burnout is also, you know, we minister to one another. We minister everything you do uh, that is an assignment from God is ministry. So if you're the one buying the groceries, that's a ministry, right? If you're the one that's um, filling out taxes, you know, wow, tax season, woohoo, that is a ministry, right? It's all a ministry. And the thing is, um, we run into trouble. We run into trouble. Um, we get uh, we get burnout. We kind of lose our way, and then we kind of half the time it hit, kind of broadsides us, and we're wondering. How do we get there from here? Hi, Paula. Uh, we're wondering, you know, burnout is really sneaky. It's really sneaky. And so many people I know, I mean, so many people I know are always either on the in burnout or on the verge of burnout. And this has become a lifestyle. And so the expectation somehow is that this is kind of how life is. And they feel it, um, but they don't know how to overcome it. And then they feel feel condemned for being in it. And there's absolutely no condemnation, Christ Jesus. Condemnation is not allowed. It is illegal. Um, so just strip that one off, off you. Okay, so um, burnout is sneaky. We talked about that. Um, and it's, it's hard because you know what? We know that God is good. And we know that the needs are great. There's so many needs. The world is screaming out with needs, with valid needs, like, and, and needs that need to be, be met now. And so we can carry, we can take things on ourselves that we're not designed to carry. Uh, and we can do that in the name of Jesus. And so ministry burnout is, we don't do ministry burnout in the name of Jesus. We do ministry in the name of Jesus. And burnout is something completely not what Jesus had in mind, right? So I'm going to give you some statistics here because this is so real. Um, 1,500 pastors leave the ministry each month due to moral failure, spiritual burnout, or contention in their churches. 1,500 pastors a month. Oh my God, let's pray for our pastors. 80% of pastors and 84% of their spouses, interesting that there are more spouse, spouse burnout than pastor burnout, feel unqualified and discouraged in their role as pastors. 50% are so discouraged that they would leave the ministry if they could. 
half, like every other pastor you see in general would be like, if I could find a way to get out, I'd get out now, right? Isn't that sad? 40% said um, they have had an extramarital affair since beginning their ministry. That's just a ding, 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 ding warning sign. Okay, wait, wait, Joanne put her book on there. Okay, Joanne, is the title on there? Heart to Dance. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's coming out soon. Hi, Helen. Uh, so totally check. If you have kids, check it out. I know Joanne. She's amazing. So big plug for Joanne. Um, 80% of seminary and Bible school graduates who enter the ministry will leave the ministry within the first five years. 80%. Five years, 80% gone. Isn't that sad? 90% of pastors said their seminary or Bible school training did only a fair to poor job preparing them for ministry. Do I hear an amen from the pastors or from, you know, it's not just pastors, it's people. I mean, I'm a, I'm a full, full-time minister, but I, and I have a pastoral grace, but I am not a pastor. I'm an apostle and prophet with a pastoral, with a pastoral grace who's able to function in that. Uh, pastors are 35% more likely to be terminated if they work less than, get this, 80 hours a week. 80 hours a week. Now, you know, you can do that. Hi, Henry. Um, I love you. You're so awesome. Brother Henry, check out his show. It is honestly, he's got such awesome stuff regularly. Um, uh, but, you know, the thing is this. If, if the expectation is I need to do 80 hours a week just to keep going, right? That is the expectation. You know what? I, I've done 100 hours a week. I've done 120 hours a week, but you cannot sustain that. It will kill you, right? 80% um, of pastors believe their ministry negatively affects their families. That's 80%, which means only 20% of the pastors think like, wow, I'm doing ministry and my family's doing great. Isn't that sad? 80% of pastors say they do not have sufficient time to spend with their spouse. Okay, sorry, that was my daughter calling. 50% <laughs> of pastors receive support and accountability from a small group. That means only less than, um, uh, just about half receive some support, right? 46% um, of pastors have experienced burnout, depression, and had to take a break from ministry. This is not a, I'm doing, hi, Julie. Hi, good to see you. Um, that That is not um, like, hey, I'm, I'm taking a break because I'm pacing myself and this is just a good thing to do. No, it's because I'm so burnt out. I like, I'm going to, I'm, I got to have it, right? Hi, Tricia. 57% um, of pastors do not have a regularly scheduled and implemented exercise routine. Hi, hi, Julie. Um, so, which means they're not able to take care of themselves, right? So, I mean, these are horrible statistics. I mean, think about that 80% leave in the first five years, okay? I mean, cray cray, right? Um, the International Classification of Disorders in the um, Psychology Manual does not list burnout as kind of a technical term, but it basically lists it under the heading of problems related in difficulties in coping with life. And, you know, it's, it's a real entity with the, the symptoms of burnout include stress, not surprising, depression, major one, insufficient sleep and rest, right? Um, spiritual dryness. Now, these are the ones that are pouring out life, right? They're pouring out life to people all the times, but they themselves are just spiritually dry. Why? Because it's going out, 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 out. It's not really coming in, right? Now, Christ is with them, but if you're not receiving from that place and getting filled up sufficiently and you're constantly giving out and you're feeling guilty that you can't say no to, to that, um, uh, you end up, you know, spiritually dry. Uh, loss of motivation from ministry. Now, I know so many people, oh, it's so sweet, when you, especially young people, and I, I, I'm young too, but maybe not as young as someone else, um, you know, uh, and they start out bright out and bushy-tailed, and they're raring to go and whatever, and they're just going to conquer the world for Jesus and all that kind of thing, and they're so motivated, and then they kind of get, you know, slapped in the face, right, and they lose their motivation, and let me just say this, God is a master motivator, but there are ways that we can operate so that we keep our motivation, so that we keep our passion, Another big, 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 big one is feelings of isolation. Okay, so these pastors, these ministers, these prophets, apostles, teachers, these people, these these uh, people that are working in children's ministry, these people that are you know whatever ministry you're doing, say they feel 
isolated. They feel like there's nowhere to go because if you're kind of the one that's supposed to have all the answers, which is a problem to begin with, okay, but if that's the weight that you're carrying, where do you go when you need some answers? Because it's kind of you and Jesus, but you also need uh, Jesus with skin on, right? Um, uh, they become uh, susceptible to temptation. Dang, da, dang, dang, dang. You know, we talked about, right? Um, I can't remember the statistic, but a certain percentage had a moral failure. They had, you know, an uh, adultery or whatever. Hi, Martha. Um, so, uh, you know, why? Because when you're, when you're burnt out, you are just looking for anything to fill you up. And that's just a, that is just a setup. Let me say, the enemy roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Well, you know what? If you're on burnout mode or if you're heading that direction, you have just fallen into the category of whom he may devour. It's a very dangerous place to be. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, burnout can occur suddenly, but usually it just kind of builds over time. Hi, Michelle. It kind of builds over time. So it's a little bit like the frog, right? Where you're, you, you put it in the kettle of water and you slowly heat up the water to, until it's boiling and the frog dies. Well, you know, at any time the frog could have jumped out, but since it was so subtle and ongoing, you know, the frog never jumped out and the frog dies. We do not let this not be you, right? Um, so let's talk about this. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, let's talk about this a little more. So your burnout can be physical burnout, just like you are. How many are tired all the time? This is what I hear. I'm so exhausted. And you know what? I'm hearing this so much from young people, so from people who should have the most energy, right? They're just exhausted all the time, right? There's a physical burnout. There's a relational burnout, right? Because the people that, you know, you're hanging out with, maybe they're just draining. Or maybe honestly, you don't have, you feel like you don't have time to hang out with friends or to, to really enjoy family. Everything is about ministry. And so if it's not ministry, it's not valuable. Because the truth is this, if you're, if you're, if you're chasing after needs all the time, the needs are endless. The needs are endless. And so um, we're going to talk about how, how to prevent that total emotional burnout, right? Depression, right? Um, anxiety, um, um, just uh, losing your passion, losing your motiva motivation. Hi, Laura. Um, and then, of course, spiritual burnout, right? So, you know, let's talk about, I mean, we kind of talked about the problem. Um, happily, I'm, I, I kind of breeze through that a little bit because I don't think it takes too many, you know, too much brilliant revelation that I need to bring about burnout. Because if you are um, in burnout, you know it, right? If you are on your way to burnout, I, I recommend ding, da, ding, 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 wake up, wake up now. And sometimes we feel we've got this, um, hi, Stuart, we've got this sense and it's prideful that we can just do it all. And, you know, a lot of times if you grew up in a place where honestly you were used to just kind of pushing on through, like you're going to make it happen. Hi, Patricia. Um, and you are just going to make it happen. You're just going to push through. You're just going to get through. And that becomes not just something you do for a specific period of time because, you know what, it, you know, the rubber's got to meet the road with life. But that's just your default way of living. So even when there's not a crisis, you may create a crisis because you don't feel like you're doing anything unless you're constantly pushing. And I, yeah, thank you, Patricia. I, I totally agree. It is a great subject because, boy, are we running into it. And I, my heart, oh, my gosh, my heart goes out to, you know, God loves his church so much that, yes, he wants your service, but he wants you. And he wants you refreshed, restored, uh, passionate, motivated, overflowing with energy, overflowing with love, overflowing with joy, overflowing with peace. Hi, Derek. Um, thank you. So glad you're watching. If you're not tying into Derek's stuff, you guys are missing out. You guys need to do that. Um, uh, but you're just overflowing with that and, and working out of that place of overflow. You know, God is not about using you up. Howdy. Uh, it's not about using you up, getting it from you because you owe him. Well, the truth is you do owe him, but you can't possibly pay. And he's not asking you to. He's asking you to rest in him, abide in him, get your energy in him him, be hooked up in him as a source. And out of that place, I love it when you guys are talking 
talking to each other. Um, and out of that place, you minister out of the overflow. So you never get to that place of dryness. So let's talk about like, how do we get there from here? Because that sounds like a great idea. Like how many of you, yeah, that's a great idea, <laughs> right? And you're totally, it's a great, it is a great idea. It, it can be very frustrating and seem impossible if you are now in burnout. Um, you know, if you are now in burnout or you are heading that direction, wow, it seems like how do I get out of the quagmire? Number one, a lot of times what's confusing is how, how did I get here? Hi, Sharon. Hi, Danny. Um, how did I actually get here in the place where I used to love ministry? Now I hate it. Now I dread it. Now I look at someone who comes up to me with their ministry problem. I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm going to throw up in my shoes, whatever that is, you know, and we're just in a place where we're burning out and that's not good. And guys, let me just be, I have totally been there and I'll probably interweave a little bit of of my story I've been in there in multiple directions because one thing I learned I learned early on in my life and this wasn't just with ministry and um, this was when I was practicing medicine this is when I was actually getting my training and this was actually when I was practicing and I just learned that I could work really hard and hi Mimi hi Beverly and I felt like if I wasn't pushing all the time that I was falling behind. As a matter of fact, I always felt like I was falling behind. So I constantly had to push to maybe fall behind at a, a l lower rate, okay, at a lesser rate. And I, I learned that, you know what, I might not be the smallest crayon in the box, a yeah, tool in the box, right? Um, but I could work hard. I could work really hard. Um, and I'm disciplined and I could do that. But there is a price to that. And it comes out as burnout. You cannot, that cannot be your default way of living. Because this is not life more abundant to the full till it overflows, right? It is life barely getting by empty on E, right? Um, uh, and and uh, just being totally tapped out. That is not what Jesus Christ came, came to give, right? That is the stealing, killing, and destroying department, not the life more abundantly department. And you know what? Let's not, let's, oh my goodness. Hi, Mimi. Let's, um, let's make sure as believers, right, that we're not, uh, that we can be ourselves and be authentic. So if you are hurting, oh my God. Hi, Becky. And um, uh, let's, let's be, let's be real about that. You need to have a place to go when you can say, I am hurting. I know Jesus is awesome. I know he provides for all of my needs, but I can't believe myself out of a paper bag. I'm hating ministry. I don't even know if I like God anymore. I really don't like myself. And I'm really disgusted with all the people that are constantly pulling on me, draining on me. You're just not in a good place. Okay. And you no know, condemnation, Christ Jesus, but oh my gosh, let's get, let's get help. Let's not uh, feel uh, let's not be prideful that we don't ask for help or admit that we have a problem because there is no one, there is no one that is not susceptible to this. Nobody. Hi, Amy. Uh, so let's, let's go on here. So uh, let's talk about some strategies like, okay, I'm headed towards burnout or I am flat out in burnout. And uh, I'll give you a little testimony first just to kind of, and then we'll talk about strategies because the testimony is always kind of interesting and fun and you can get to know me a little better. But you know, I went from performing um, at just getting into medical school. Hi, Amy. Um, and performing to uh, do medical school and then performing to do residency and chief residency and then performing to do a practice. Um, and then after that, when I kind of retired from that, I was performing as a, as a mom extraordinaire and wife extraordinaire, super mom, right? And then after that, I went into ministry and performed in ministry and it was constant performance. And I reached a place in ministry where I was flat out, um, flat out burnout. I mean, like if I had to minister to one more person, I think I'd throw up in my shoes, right? If I had to say, hi, Nini. Yes. The body is suddenly gone to excuse. Yes. Yes. Very true. Um, so, uh, and in that place, I reached a place where honestly, I had no vision. Now I had a lot of tragedies happen all at once on top of ministry. I just had one thing. I, it was like, bam, 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 bam. And I reached a place where I, I had to step down. I had to step out. Um, and I was offended with everybody and their dog. And I'm just, I'm just being uh, honest here. I mean, I was not in a good place and I was really hurting. Um, and I knew I had to step down. So I did. And I really had to step down in the place where I was not getting my identity from ministry, 
but I was getting my identity from God. And he literally had to step out until he could heal my heart. I could get that identity shored up. I could get all the hurts shored up because there were a lot of hurts. When I talk about spiritual abuse, I know what I'm talking about. When I talk about um, being burnt out, I know what I'm talking about. And I really had to retreat back into a place where God literally had to minister to me for months on end. It really took about a year to really dig myself out. And my issue was... I was so burnt out and so um, disconnected from a vision. The word of God says, without vision, the people perish. And I'd lost my vision. I had lost the vision. So I had nothing. And I was like, Lord, every dream I had with this is bankrupt, is totally bankrupt. (coughs) Sorry, (laughs) just breathe in my own spit. That's so precious. I'm such a professional. It's awesome. But, um, and I literally had, Lord, you are going to have to breathe life into me emotionally and into my dream. You are literally going to have to resurrect my dreams that you and I have been dreaming together because I did not have one. Everything I loved, basically, not everything, most big things, Aries had taken a huge hit and I, I just had no vision at all. So, okay, that was kind of my thing. And it took me about a year to dig out. And I dug out by using these very things. So, listen, I know what I'm talking about. I'm like, I know. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, hi uh-oh. Let's see. Uh, Nicolay, did I say that right? I'm, I'm so sorry if I butchered your name. Thank you for watching. Um, so, uh, so, first thing you need to do is you need to retreat back to the one who made you, the one who loved you and gave himself up for you. Now, what does that look like? Well, you know what? It looks like rest. In other words, you know, when you're kind of a wounded animal, you need to retreat back to your little cave. You need to retreat back to your little hiding place, that place where you can recover. So what does that mean? That means you may need to step down from ministry. That means you actually may need to really pull out of everything that you think is going to totally fall apart if you don't show up, right? Um, the Word of God uh, it says Matthew eleven twenty eight twenty nine. 29, the Amplified, cla- my f- classic version is my favorite here. It says, come to me, all you who labor and are he- heavy laden. Okay, so these, here we are. We're laboring, we're laboring, we're laboring, right? We're la- it feels like labor. It feels heavy. You feel weighed down. If you're feeling heavy and weighed down, ding, da, ding, ding, ding. This is not how you're supposed to be operating. No condemnation, but let's do something about that. It were heavy laden and overburdened. How many of you feel like you're carrying the burdens of the world? Like you have, I mean, there's people starving, there's people getting raped and there's people getting murdered and there's wars and our kids in classrooms are shooting themselves. And I mean, you name it. Okay. And you can get so overburdened. It says, and I will cause you to rest. Okay, so this is coming to Jesus. This is coming to love. And he will cause you to rest, okay? I will uh, release, relieve, and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now, what is going on here? Well, a yoke, you're yoked in. That means you're hooked up to the source. And guess who's doing the heavy lifting? Yes, it's Jesus. It's the one that actually is capable, right? And now this is really interesting. It says, and learn of me. See, there's something in that place where we're operating in this heavy, laden, overburdened, where we're missing something about God, right? We're missing something about him because he's gentle. He's meek, humble, and lowly at heart, okay? So there's something in that place where we're feeling overburdened, where there's a harshness, where there's a taskmaster, where there's this sense of, wow, God, you know what? You're, you gave me this assignment, and I've got to carry it all by myself, Ding, da, ding, ding, ding. This is a problem, right? Um, and no, so we need to learn of him. Like, what are you really asking? What is your character? Because I'm operating as if you're a taskmaster. I'm operating as if, you know what? You got it, got me started, but man, the rest is up to me. That is really a bad place to be. And you will find relief and ease and refreshen, refreshment and recreation. Isn't that interesting? And blessed quiet for your souls, right? Uh, I'm going to do the same verse in the message. This is so good. Okay, so guys, just take out your spoon. It's yummy. This is really good here. Are you ready? Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Can I get an amen, right? Come to me. 
get away with me. Ding, 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 little clue. And you, you'll recover your life. You see, I was doing everything for Jesus. I just wasn't coming away with Jesus to recover my life. Hi, John. Um, he says, I'll show you how to take a real rest. How many of you have taken a rest and it didn't feel like a real rest? It felt like, well, I wasn't doing ministry, but I didn't rest. Well, that's not a real rest, right? Um, uh, walk with me and work with me. This is so good. Watch how I do it. You see, there's something about what Jesus is doing in the place of the ministry that you have. And this may be in or out of the church, because let's be very clear. Ministry is not just in the church. It's in business. It's in our families. It's in education. It's in, in, in the entertainment industry. You name a place. There is no place that God does not fill the space, right? So watch how he does it. Hey, Watch how accountant Jesus does the, the taxes. Watch how, um, how Holy Spirit as a mom raises kids. Watch how uh, a father God as, um, as uh, someone in the entertainment industry does entertainment. Watch how, we, how, watch, how, watch how he does it. He says, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Now that will just preach. I could spend the rest of the time on that. The unforced rhythms of grace. Grace has a rhythm. Grace has anointing. Grace is not, grace is a person. Grace is what he provides, but grace is an empowerment for you to do everything that he's called you to do and not to do everything that he's not called you to do. Hi, Crystal. Um, and there's an unforced rhythm. Sometimes we get started and it's like, it's kind of like we heard the last command, but we're so kind of out of touch with the one who gave the command that we didn't hear him when he shifted gears. And he said, great, that, that assignment's over. You need to hand that off. Or great, that assignment's over, but we need to do this differently, right? To keep you out of that place of burn, uh, of burnout. Now this is God. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. This is keeping company with love. Okay. So what, what are you doing freely and lightly? So is ministry freely and lightly? And if it's not, no condemnation, but let's get there from here, right? Um, because he's, he, it's, he's not the one who's laying something heavy or ill-fitting. Okay, ill-fitting means you were not designed for that, so that's not for you. Hi, Jesse. Uh, Jesse or Joy, I don't know which one of you, but hi, both of you, either one of you. <laughs> um, uh, so he wants you to be free. He wants you to be light, okay? Um, to retreat back to love. You know, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. He's a refuge. He is your refuge. And there are times when you just need to run for the hills. You just need to take refuge, right? Um, second thing to do, slow down, slow down. Sometimes we need to slow down and let his word minister to us. Sometimes we're so much like been there, done that, bought the teacher. I can do a five part sermon on that, you know, whatever. We're not letting it minister to us. See, because if you're studying the word just to preach, Okay. And, or if you're studying the word just because it's an obligation, okay, these are problems. You need to be receiving and partaking of it so it's life to you. So it is life to you. Uh, John 6, 63, the spirit gives life, the pr flesh profits nothing. The words I've spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. God's words, whether they're his written word, okay, or whether what he's just ministering to you, to, to you personally. And very often when you're in that place of burnout, God will minister to you in a very, very simple way. It'll be like, I love you. It'll be quiet. It'll be peace. Why? Because you're so overwhelmed with all this stuff going on, right? You are fried, okay? So you can't take in a lot, but it's the simplicity of the gospel that brings life to the gospel, okay? Um, we need to renew our minds. The third week, we need to renew our minds to the true goodness of God. Now, you know, a lot of times we preach goodness um, and we mean it when we preach it, you know, but we're not really that convinced, 
because maybe we're disappointed. Maybe we have kind of forgotten. Maybe we've gotten so much in so much of a, of a burnout stage that nobody feels good, including God. Okay, I'm getting back to my thing because we skipped here. Um, Romans 8.32, he who did not spare his own son, uh, but gave him up for us all, how shall he not freely with him give us all things? He's, he's the one that gives us all things. So what are you needing? Are you needing rest? Are you just, are you just needing to link up to the anointing, right? That breaks the bondage and destroys the yoke, right? What do you, what are you needing? Are you needing just some good, um, um, inner, just kick your feet up and watch a good TV program or sit on the porch? I mean, I remember for a long time when I was in the stage, I, I would just sit. I just sit. I didn't want to watch anything. I didn't want to gauge anything. I just wanted quiet. And anything that was not quiet, that was loud, literally because my, my nerves were so on edge, it literally frazzled my nerves. And I just needed quiet. You know, Jesus said, I will give you blessed quiet for your souls, right? So frazzled so souls are very loud souls, right? And you need his quiet. And just practicing that presence you, <clears throat> where you can connect to that at any time, that takes practice. That means you need to slow down enough to get quiet. And sometimes when we are, I mean, one of the, let me, I'll be very frank with you. One, I mean, not that I, I'm, sometimes I'm not frank with you, but, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, for me, a lot of the reason why I was so busy and pushing all the time is I was running away from pain. And the moment I got quiet, I actually, pain would come up and I just would medicate with doing. Okay, so that was maybe more productive than shooting up heroin, okay, but uh, was not a God remedy, right? It was a recipe for burnout. And so literally, I had to do business with this pain. Is What is this pain? Where is this pain? I needed help. I needed people to minister to me uh, and just sit with the Lord and let the Lord minister to me so I could resolve those things. You know, if you're in pain, there is remedy for your pain. And let's deal with the pain. Let's not run from the pain. The pain will not kill you. It may feel like it might, but it won't kill you. Okay, so let's deal with what the roots of those are and let the Lord minister uh, that to you. Um, we're talking about uh, renewing your mind to the goodness of God. Got off a little bit, but that was good. Um, let's talk about this. Galatians 6, 7 through 8. Do not be deceived. Now, wh why do you think it says this? It's because we have a tendency to be deceived, right? Hello, and that's all of us. Okay, so let's just be humble enough to realize, wow, I can be deceived here. God is not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed, nor treated with contempt, nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside, right? So he's, no one's going to mock God. And get, let me just say this, guess who's mocking God the most? It's the enemy. It's the enemy. He's constantly trying to mock God. He's constantly trying to exalt himself against the knowledge of God, okay? That's the real mocker. It says, for whatever a man sows, this and this only is what he will reap. For the one who sows to his flesh his sinful capacity. Let me just say, if your sinful capacity is the old man that's been crucified. But if you don't realize he's been crucified, that is very active and very present reality, okay? Um will reap from the, the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the spirit will from, from the spirit reap eternal life. So let's say in this place where I was medicating myself with honestly busyness, with ministry, with good things, okay? Well, you know what I was doing? I was reaping destruction. Now, my, thankfully, the people weren't reaping destruction, right? Um, but I was. It was coming at, at my price. And guess what? I am not the savior. I'm not the source. God never asked me to be to pay the price. He, he paid a price for me so I could do what he called me to do. And I could do that in rest. So you know what? What I'm saying in this is in the goodness of God, man, you've been sowing good things. You're going to reap good things. Trust him. Sometimes we think, well, I, you know, we get all mad at God. We're like, I, I sowed, I sowed, I sowed, and nothing happened. Well, you know what? Whatever you do for the Lord was not done in vain. So if you did it with a pure heart, with a pure motive as unto him, somehow that's going to come back to you. Even honestly, if 
the results look like a big fat goose egg, right? You know, I, I worked for years in this ministry and it just could never take off or whatever that is. Well, one way or the other, you're going to reap from that because God is not mocked. That's what's at stake. Okay. Um, really a practical thing. Uh, if you're uh, finding you're leaning in burnout or you are, um, or you already are uh, bur- burnout, do enter, uh, do activities which energize you. Because sometimes, especially in ministry, we get so disconnected from our own hearts and we think the only thing that's worthwhile is ministry. That is so silly. And, and we also, it's a misunderstanding of what ministry is anyway. Okay. But you know what? Do things that energize you. So, you know, maybe going bowling would energize you, right? Maybe hanging out with some non-Christian friends would energize you. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, God is a joyful God. He is a joyful God. And the word of God says in Nehemiah eight ten, it says, um, uh, Nehemiah said, go and enjoy cho- choice food and sweet drinks and, sp- and sp- uh, send some to those who have nothing prepared. Go party, everybody. This day is holy to our Lord. Partying is holy. Hallelujah. Not if you're shooting up meth, but God loves a party, right? First miracle, turn water into wine, right? Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So that is your portion. And when we forfeited our joy, we forfeited our strength. You know, we need to realize that um, we need to recognize in ourselves what things we're doing that drain us. And then we need to be intentional about taking the time and the energy to do the things that energize us. And for so many people, if you have been serving, 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 you may have no idea what energizes you. And that was my place. I could work, boy, I could work practically anybody under the table. I had no clue what energized me. And because for the most part, I wouldn't quit working long enough to deal with the pain that was hurting me so that I ever could figure out what was energizing to me. Right. And I just, this is, this is, uh, just, just an area that uh, I just was so disconnected from my own heart. And the thing is what happens is religion says, if we're not working, um, we're not doing God's thing. And I'm just saying, you know, when you're hanging out and, and uh, just enjoying time with friends or, uh, or sitting by the lake or sitting on the porch or lying down on the couch, just relaxing or getting a massage or whatever it is that you do, um, you do it with Jesus. It's a holy thing. The this, this separation of the secular and the, the, um, the spiritual is total false construct. Jesus occupied. There's no place that God is not. Now he may not be, um, he may not be, you know, you know the satanic ritual abuse. He's probably, he's not in that. Okay. But, but it's not like he's not there, but the awareness of his presence is not there, but I'm saying he takes up all the space. So whatever you're doing, okay. Invite him. He's right there and he wants to enjoy it with you. Hi, Helen. Um, so the word of God says, now this is great. Romans eight fourteen. it says that the, the sons of God are led by the spirit of God. So you know what, as, as a son and as a daughter, you're like, okay, God, I have no idea what would be fun. Say if I went fishing or say if I did a craft project or if I did scrapbooking or if I went shopping or if I watched a football game or, you know, whatever, or worked on a car or whatever it is that you find relaxing and invigorating, right? As a son of God, you can say, Jesus, show me. I need to be refilled. I'm running on E and it's not good. Hi, Tim. I love you. You're so awesome. So good to see you. Um, so, you know, uh, we need to allow the spirit to say, wow, maybe I just want to hang out and, you know, have a beer with my friends. I'm not really a beer drinker, but a lot of people are. You enjoy your beer. Just don't get drunk. Okay. You enjoy your wine. Just don't get drunk, but um, enjoy it. Why? Because God gave it to you. You know, Jesus turned water into wine. So if that's your thing, totally enjoy it. Right. Um, The sons of God are led by the spirit of God. Hi, Rachel. Um, so, um, another thing, recognize that apart from love, you can do nothing. Now, if you've watched it, my videos or written, you know, l- looked at anything or written or any, 
You've probably heard this before quite a bit. Why we need to be reminded because we're such independent little beings. We like to do our own thing. We like to, um, we, we think, yeah, I can handle this. I can do this. I can take it. Thank you, Jesus. I'll take it from here. Well, the word of God says that apart from me, you can do absolutely no thing of eternal value. And you've just disconnected from the vine. So let me give you, I, this thing keeps on resetting here. Just give me a moment. Uh, yes. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 4.1. Um, no, that's not the right scripture. Yeah, I don't know what that where that scripture is. It's uh, John 15, 1 through 5. That's funny. Um, it says, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. So this is Jesus. This is the father and Holy Spirit is operating through that. So right. So it's all three. The whole Trinity is working on your behalf, right? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now, let me just talk about this fruit for a second. Fruit is not necessarily how many people are attending my church. Oh, it can be that. Or how many books I sold. It can be that. Or, um, or I don't know, how many people I laid hands on and they got an instantaneous healing. It can be that as well. But fruit can also be, wow, I'm at peace. I'm doing my shopping. I'm enjoying hanging out with the cantaloupes and getting, I, 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 I choose my, my fruit by the spirit, right? Cause I'm a son of God, daughter of God. I'm led by the spirit. Which cantaloupe do I get? Because I can't squeeze every single one and do whatever. I just use my faith in that. That's just something I do because I don't have a lot of time. Right? So, right. So you do it in that place. So whatever you're doing, you, you do bearing fruit is being at peace. Bearing fruit is being, what's the fruit of the spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, right? Faithfulness and self-control, or I had to think about that for a second. Um, hi, Jeff. Um, so those, that's fruit. It's not necessarily numbers in my church or my email list or whatever it would be that somehow we get really weird about. Now, I'm not saying that's not fruit. I'm just saying, well, whatever we're doing, the fruit of the Spirit should be operating in all of that, in every bit of that, right? He says, um, already you are clean because of the word I've spoken to you. That's good to know, right? That's a good thing. You are clean. Hallelujah. That'll help you. Abide in me and I in you. Now let's talk about the word abide. The word abide is to stay in one place without changing. So let's think about that. So if you're staying in one, where is this place that you're staying without changing? Wow. It's connected to Jesus. It's connected who to that juice, that sap that's running through God, right? That, that Holy Spirit intoxicating connection that you have that brings life more abundantly to the full till it overflows. That connection, you just camp out. You don't go in and out. See, a lot of times what happens is people stay, they get kind of juiced up, and then they disconnect. It's like the leaf walking on its own. And then they wonder why they're starting to shrivel up and they're starting to turn brown. And they're starting to look kind of, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden they hate everybody. Why? Because they're crispy. <laughs> There's a lot of crispy Christians, right? Whoa, because we forgot our source. We thought, thank you, Jesus, for the juice. I'm going to take it from here. Well, there's no part where you take it from here. There's n that's never, never, that is not scriptural. You abide, man. You hang out. And in that place, fruit just pops out, pops out, pops out, pops out, pops out, right? Um, it says, um, abide in me and I in you. So actually you abide in him, but he abides in you. So you got it coming and going, right? He's in you. He's on you. He's around you. He takes up everything has to do with you. He's all into it. He's all into your stuff. It's fabulous, right? As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you. Now, how many of us, I, we're just like ding to ding ding. We're trying to bear fruit. We think Gee, I got to do this for Jesus. Well, no, number one, you don't got to. You get to. If it's not a get to, well, then don't do anything till you get in the place where it's a get to. Okay. So God is not into obligation. That's called hmm, the law. That's called, <laughs> that's called religion. That's called obligation, right? Uh, where am I here? I totally lost my spot. Hold on. It was a good spot. Um, Okay, um, I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, so he says it again. Why? Because we tend to be a little dense and, you know, he loves us. He loves us in our denseness, but our denseness hurts us, right? Um, I in him, he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me, you can do no thing. No thing. 
There's no part where you take it from here, right? So if you find your crispy, no condemnation, just reconnect. Just reconnect. Do what you have to do. Close the door. Turn off the phone. Put the silly cell phone away, <laughs> right? Reconnect. Slow down. Reconnect, right? Uh, John uh, 15, 1 through 5. Oh, this is not John 15, 1 through 5. It's Isaiah, I think it's 43. You guys may remember. You can help me with this. But they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They should mount up on wings like eagles. They should run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Let's talk about waiting on the Lord. Now, it used to be kind of in the more Pentecostal circles, right, that waiting on the Lord was yet another stinking thing to do on your to-do list, okay? So you got to wait. You got to tarry. But in that waiting and tarrying, there was a travailing. There was a pushing because we got to get into the spirit. We got to we got to climb our way in there. And you know what? If Jesus's sacrifice wasn't enough to get you into heaven, you're praying, fasting, travailing, rebuking, whatever we're doing. Let's create a list of 5,000 intercessors is going to do absolutely nothing to get you in heaven because you're already there. See, the reason you're travailing is because you don't realize you're already there, right? So you're working for something you already have. And if you're working for something you already have, you don't realize you have it and you will never be able to enjoy it because you don't believe you have it. So if I'm working to get into this chair and I'm already sitting in it, I will never enjoy the reality of resting in my chair because I'm travailing, I'm working, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm interceding, I'm rebuking, I'm confessing, I'm decreeing and declaring, I'm fasting, I'm whatever it is. And I have been sitting in the chair the whole time. Just a thought. Maybe just a thought. Um, we need to, um, the other thing is, uh, so that's good. So and um, abide in the vine, realize that apart from him, you can do nothing. So just, I refuse. I flat out refuse. Like if I'm not connected with God, I'm like, I'm not doing this until I am, whew, I'm, I'm, I'm sinking back into my connection. That is an ever present reality, right? Um, I'm sinking into that reality. And that is a mind shift. That is pra that's practicing the presence, right? And so if you've been disconnected from the presence, well, you just need to practice some more. And it may take some intention. It takes some intentionality, right? But boy, is that worth it? Why? Because all of a sudden, whoo, you're, you're hooked up to the, to the intoxicating, um, invigorating. It says, do not be drunk with wine, but be ever filled and stimulated by the Holy Spirit. So you know what? You may be drunk in the spirit, but you're also stimulated while you're connected, right? You're actually awakening to the reality of God as an, as an ongoing present reality that never leaves you, never forsakes you, has already championed everything for you. And wow, you're able to do those exploits and you're able, oh my God, to have fun. Hallelujah. While you're doing them. Sounds like a good plan. Jesus. Thank you for that. And help me with my iPad here. Okay. We're getting there. Hold on. This is a holy pause right here. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, oh yeah, one thing that we tend to have a problem with is that we feel because we are connected with the ways of the world, and that is a fallen mindset that says, I have got to push through to promote myself. That basically says that, man, I, I'm going to have to work it, work it to get promoted. And, you know, God says that, um, uh, 37, 34, it says, wait for the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt you and you will inherit the land. Okay. Um, you see, you inherit your promises. Why? By resting in what he's already done. You see the manifestation of your promises. And this is not just a faith thing that we stand in faith and we don't see it, but we still stand in faith because that's the best we can ever. No, you're standing in faith to see the manifestation. You're not standing in faith for the purpose of standing in faith. You're standing in faith. Faith is not an idol. Okay. Faith is just a conduit. So you're staying in rest to see that manifestation. Um, the word of God says, says, um, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. Well, what does that mean? When you humble before the Lord, you say, you know what, God, I can't do one stinking thing apart from you. Can't do it. Mm -mm, not going to happen. You're God. I'm not. 
Okay. And you made me amazing because I made in your image and likeness. So humility says that I'm amazing because I'm made in the image and likeness of God, but I am not confused about what the source of that is. That is all to his glory, right? That is totally you manifesting your amazing, beautiful, powerful exploit, doing devil kicking, butt kicking person that you're manifesting is totally to the glory of God. He's the source. He's the one that made you, but let's be very clear. Son of God, daughter of God, you are amazing and you need to know it. This is not arrogant. This is just glorifying the one who loved you, gave himself up for you. And the one who is right now conforming you into the image of God in your flavor. And man, that better look breathtaking. Why? Because he's breathtaking. So, you know, be uh, in the place where you are undervaluing yourself. Um, this is a problem because you're literally insulting the one who created you just a thought right there. And in the place where we get prideful and we think we have it our, all our little ducks in a row, okay, that's a place that needs to be taken down. Why? Because we've, we've kind of gotten confused. We think somehow we're the source. That is because I'm so special and everyone else isn't. Well, no, everybody's special, right? And so you're operating with him as the source. It says promotion. It says, for, uh, for not from the east nor from the west nor from the desert comes exaltation or promotion, but God is the judge. He puts down one and lifts up the other. So this concept of I'm having to strive to promote, I'm having to strive to get my ministry off the ground. I'm having to strive. I'm having to push. I'm having to yeah, all that stuff, right? That is a faulty, faulty concept, right? Because God is, when you are ready to be promoted, there, there is nobody, no devil in hell, no, no man on earth or woman on earth that can stop your promotion. That is a God thing. The only one that can do that is you, Son of, da son of God, daughter of God. The only one that can do that is you because you're not getting an agreement with what God is doing. But sometimes we, we go out ahead of God and, and that's why it's such a push and so hard. And that's why we constantly, that's why the sons of God are led by the spirit of God. There may be a season where God really has you resting and not doing much, even though you're ridiculously anointed. Why? Because he's doing something in you. So we need to trust him, right? That's why we need to humble him because he knows when we're ready. And let me tell you, we think we're ready a lot of times and we're really not ready. Oh man, that poster child for me. That was me for years. I'm ready. Send me. It's like, no, not going to do it. <laughs> right. There was stuff he had to work in me. And a lot of this performance stuff, a lot, if he sent me out like that, that was a recipe for burnout. Okay. And I, you know, if I insisted on going out on my own like that, okay. Ding, 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 ding. ding. Why did I get burnout? Can't figure that out. Um, we need to renew our mind to God's ever present reality. Uh, Hebrews 13, five says, let your character or moral disposition be free from the love of money. This is in the context of the love of money. I'm going to skip over that. I just want to give you a little con context. Um, be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. Okay. So the ability to be content, okay. With whatever's going on, that is a total God thing. That is a powerful place. That is a place where, you know what the enemy is like, well, you don't have this and you don't have that. And you should have this and you should have that. I was like, well, I'm, I'm good. Cause I'm going to get all these things, uh, in God's timing. So I'm just not really going to worry about it. Why? Cause he's good. and He loves me. He won't, he's there. He denies me nothing. Okay. Do not be, uh, do not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who richly gives you all things to enjoy richly, man, he doesn't just give you a little dab. It's like, have, have a 15th helping, right? He richly gives you all things. What to enjoy, right? Not to barely scrape down. Like uh, he provides for all my needs. So I only just need to breathe air and have a little piece of bread and I'm good. I'm good. No, he richly gives you all things to enjoy. Now you may need to start with the air and the little crust of bread and that's fine, but use your faith. Why? Because he is not a skimpy God. He is totally not a skimpy God. Um, it says, for he himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not to any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down, relax my hold on you, assuredly not. Yay. Hallelujah. That'll preach. That's uh, Hebrews 13, five in the amplified classic Bible It's like, bam, bam, bam. I'm here. I'm here. I got you. I'm not for, I'm not losing my grip on you. There's no, there's no way you're going to fall out of my sphere of influence. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Why? I'm here. I'm already here. You don't have to convince me. You don't have to invite me. You don't have to beg. You don't have to fast. You don't have to confess till your little confessor goes off. I was, I was here before you ever had a clue that I was here. 
I, he is hit there for the unbeliever. He is there. He's there. He's got, he's got you. And you connecting with the, wow, he's got me. He's not leaving me. He's not losing his grip on me. He will never, ever, 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 assuredly not. I will not. I will not in any degree leave you helpless nor forsake you, let you down, relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. Okay, so that's huge. We have to be, we really have to, you know, the Bible says that where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the depths of hell, you are there. Do you know God is in the depths of hell? Right? And we thought, we thought all the time that God couldn't be there because it was hell. The truth is it's hell because people are separated in their consciousness from hell and the devil is freaking eating their lunch right? So if you were denying Jesus, if you were denying Christ, you're not connected with his reality for you. So hell is manifesting. Okay. Uh, total different concept, but I'm just saying if he's there, well, let me just tell you, son of God, daughter of God, he is where you are at right now. Who he's got you. He's around you. He's in you. He's on you. He's through you. You are sandwiched. You are so, um, uh, uh, just tucked into the presence of God, right? That you, it's a waking up. We just need to wake up, right? We need to wake up, okay? Um, let's go to, uh, let's talk about another thing. Uh, another thing that you can do. Take care of your physical body. Now, let me just say this. So many of us in the church were brought up to think, wow, the spiritual, oh, you know, it's the Holy Grail. We're just, I just want nothing but the spirit. Nothing, nothing but the spirit. And then the physical is this fallen thing. And you know what? Um, that is a Gnostic, Gnostic, uh, the Gnostic heresy is a, is a heresy that says the spiritual is good, the physical is evil. And the Gnostic heresy ultimately said that Jesus had, could not have come into the flesh because the flesh is evil. And that is caca, right? Because if, if Jesus didn't come in the flesh, humanity is not redeemed. Okay, so Jesus came in the flesh and, and the flesh is not intrinsically evil. As a matter of fact, when God created flesh, he said, Whoo! Wow, this is so good. <laughs> this is so good. Now there is a portion of the flesh. Flesh is two. There's sarks, and then there's the old man. Okay, and you're just your flesh. Flesh. Uh, your physical body. Not evil. Your physical body needs are not evil. God created them. Hallelujah. God's idea. Right. Um, the flesh of the fallen man. What was? What was? Is what was? What is what was crucified with Christ. It's been taken care of. Our problem is that we just don't know it. You're a new man, a new creature, creation. I'm not going to get totally into that um, because we can really um, go off track here. But you need to take care of your physical body. So in other words, you know, a lot of times in the church, uh, you know, we feel like we're doing all these spiritual things and we run our bodies down. We don't get enough sleep. Maybe we're smoking. Maybe we're being gluttons. You know, gluttony, and this is not to not to um, offend anybody because I, I had eating problems for years, so I get it, okay? Um, but gluttony... Is, it really is a sin, okay? Um, and it's not the one thing we can do because every other pleasure has been taken away. Because <laughs> we just buffet at the church, right? Uh, but we, uh, but we don't smoke and we don't chew we don't, and we don't go with those who do, right? We don't drink. We can't go to the movies. If it's good, it's bad. I mean, this is gnostic crap. Just it is. It's not. It's not God. It's not scripture, right? So let's talk about how God feels about your body, okay? First. Corinthians 19 uh, to 20 or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you whom you have from God you are not your own you were bought with a price so glorify God in your body now this is not a beat up thing if there's some sort of fleshy something or other that you're doing um you know and you're just like maybe maybe you just got done you know going to the buffet and you just totally pigged out no condemnation it's, condemnation's not allowed remember um but it is to say wow you know what god loves your body and he made your body with physical needs he made your body to need rest he made your body to need sunshine and fresh air he made your body to need sleep he made your body a sexual entity right sex is not bad perverted sex is bad you know it's not the needs that are bad it's what's when they're perverted right all of these things he made for that so you know how much fresh air are you getting how much exercise are you getting how much sufficient sleep are you getting 
How much sun are you getting, right? How much are you resting? How much are you just breathing deeply, right? How much are you investing in your body? I personally take a lot of vitamins because I, I feel like this is one area I can, um, along with other things that I do, um, really um, help my body to have a strong immune system because you know what I got enough faith projects and I don't and I'm really healthy I don't need my body run down so I have to use my faith on overcoming colds or overcoming cancer or overcoming all these different things because I abused my body in the name of Jesus right um, no I I I use that I did that properly uh, so why I don't have another faith project um, uh, another big, big one. We need to cut off or drastically limit draining relationships. Now, how many of you um, minister to some people that are pretty draining? Okay. I mean, you know, broken people can be pretty draining. Okay. No condemnation in Christ Jesus. You need to not be available all the time. You need to have limits on how much time and resources that you're willing to give out, right? You need to be able to, um, to say, I I'm sorry, I'm not available, right? Not available and actually not apologize. Um, you need to be able to, um, to decide who gets in my inner circle, Right? Who are my who are my homies? Who are my inner circle buddies? And who are the people that are kind of out here? Most people that you have are um, are going to be either in an outer ministry area or an acquaintance area. Okay, very few inner people. Those inner people that you choose should be ones that are giving you life giving that are, are not draining that are supplying life. I have a bunch of extra of other things. So I'm probably going to have to do another um, taping on this. Uh, and I just wanted to let you know that uh, in May, I'm still working on it. So we're still uh, figuring out the details, but I am doing a workshop on burnout and spiritual abuse in the Colorado Springs area. So uh, be on the lookout if you are like, oh God, I need this. I'm going to be uh, uh, ministering directly in that. We'll probably record it as well and make that available to people because this is such a need. And then I have more uh, material, so I'll probably do a part two at some point uh, because we're kind of getting long in our recording. Uh, but I wanted to encourage you in that. For those of you who are needing some ministry, um, just a couple reasons resources because my workshops in May and you may need some stuff now. I really recommend you get my Marked by Love book. I've got a chapter called Freaky Rest. It's a real, it's very funny, but very life giving chapter in the place of how do we do what we do so we don't get burnout. And I really recommend if you've gotten the free chapter download, just get the book. If you haven't gotten the book, um, and you can skip the free chapter download and get the book. Um, and there's also my rare and beautiful, beautiful treasures uh, for how God redeems things in places a little bit, uh, goes into quite a bit about how God redeems in places maybe where you have been burnt out, um, where your, your dream has failed. And that's a free mini book. And so that link is on there. And then the link to the uh, Marked by Love on Amazon is in there. I don't normally put on two links, but I felt I was supposed to this time. So anyway, I wanna, you know, I hate to, leap to kind of get you yes i'm here tell me what to do uh the other thing is if you're really wanting some some big heavy hitting uh help with this i do have my marked by love course boy it's when you're able to retreat to that place it's amazing what happens uh when you're actually able to receive and get filled up again there's an anointing on that it's been really breathtaking um, i don't have the landing page on that but you can go to my website katherinetune.com um, and click for more information on that as well i just didn't want to bombard you with 12 different you know links like thanks Catherine. So anyway, um, I hope that's been helpful for you. Um, get the help you need. Take care of yourselves. We need you for the long haul. And Jesus wants you to have an amazing, amazing life and enjoy that life. So I hope that's been a blessing to you. Love you guys. You guys have an amazing day. Bye-bye.